towards the forward pocket. Awkward bounce, Brian Catizano taken nicely by Frederick. Turns, snaps, and goals! He's kicked two goals and now we'll kick in. We'll go for distance, wants Pierce. McAvoy oh, in the way. Oh, wonderful grab. mark taken Clutch. by Gay. Ash Woodland for a 19th of the season. Woodland reigns supreme. Hello everyone and welcome to The W Show presented by NAB, Nat Edwards, Sarah Black and Ellie Blackburn with you to unpack the final round of the home and away season for 2022. Sarah, welcome back to you. How are you feeling after having those wisdom teeth out? I'm getting there. <laughs> what, what, what I didn't really need was, you know, two days post-op, have my colleague, you know, close friend, <laughs> you know, my mentor calling me soft. <laughs> I don't it's recall rough. that. Rough. I think it was on this very couch. Oh, no, it may have been. I've got a short memory. <laughs> but I'm glad that you're back and looking so well. So it's nice mm. to have you back on the couch. We missed you last week. Mm. Oh, well, thank did, you. Nat. Did that make up for it? Yeah. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. Let's just move on. <laughs> Ellie, nice to see you. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, it's good to be back again. Uh, another big week of AFLW and into finals now. You didn't get lost coming back from Ballarat. We weren't sure you'd make it in time. No, no. <laughs> straight down the highway, which is good. A good easy trip back so yes all right we'll chat more about the dogs in just a moment but I want to take a look at the ladder because the home and away season is done and dusted this is how things finished up obviously Adelaide the minor premiers the D's finishing in second the Lions and Roos earning the right to host finals in week one unfortunately for West Coast a wooden spoon for them with just the one win this season and Ellie obviously your Bulldogs just missing out on a final spot. When you look back and reflect on the season, I know it's only been sort of 24 <laughs> hours or so, um, but COVID just put you on the, the back foot from the start. How do you reflect mm. on the season? Yeah, I think for us, I mean, we're really proud of our season. Um, if you put into COVID and injuries and sort of early exits from our team with Gabby Newton and Kirsten McLeod um, put on the long-term injury list and then, yeah, we... We got hit by COVID pretty hard. Um, so to finish where we did and, and to finish just outside the top six, I think as a leader of the club, I'm really proud of, of what the team was able to produce this year. And we also saw what you were able to actually produce when you had a six-day break. You beat the Adelaide Crows, the minor premiers. Oh, no. So if any teams in the finals want to know how to beat them, hit <laughs> us up and we can help you with that. <laughs> now, Sarah, when you look at that ladder, what surprised you with that final makeup? Um, I think the top six, I pretty much had that as my pre-season top six. It was the same as last year's top six. It was the same as last year, I know, I know, <laughs> a bit of a get out. Um, but I had thought that the Sun, I didn't see the rate of improvement from the Suns. I think that was most pleasing out of the season was how quickly they managed to turn things around and, and shoot up the ladder. Um, and it just shows how quickly things can change in AFLW. And Kate Sermon even picked you up on, on She did, one. on uh, <laughs> credit to the girls. We have a listen, actually. Good chat with Kate. She's, uh, she's always, uh, she was just coming off her um, her COVID break um, and I think she'd been stuck at home all week and she was wanting to, you know, wanting to talk and, and have a chat. So, um, yeah, worth following that one up no. on credit to the girls. It was great to see the Suns have a much improved season in 2022. So we of course turn our attention to a final series. Exciting stuff and this is how it's going to look in week one. The semi-finals obviously Adelaide and Melbourne straight through to a preliminary final. They get the week off and Brisbane host Collingwood while the Kangaroos host Fremantle and I want to take a closer look at that first qualifying final there. Um, Ellie I want you to put your Collingwood hat on. Make the case for the Pies. Well I mean through a, a tough season for them through injury. You, you tend to find a, a fair bit of resilience and, and firepower from that. I think we've seen a really different Collingwood side throughout the season. So, But I think they've been really competitive and they've fought really hard in, in really important games for them. Um, but, I mean, having a look at this record as well between them and, it's and Brisbane, it's, it's always been super close for them. Um, you know, a, a number of games under a, under a goal. So I think for Collingwood, obviously the likes of Jamie Lambert firing up in the midfield being a um, really strong contender for them. But, you know, Sabrina Frederick, she's come to life a little bit more in the last couple of rounds and, and kicking plenty of goals. And obviously Chloe Malloy down forward has been really good for him. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be interesting how this all works out, I think. Um, 
I'm not sold on the Magpies midfield as yet. Um, Steve Simon said in that fourth quarter against Richmond, they had Alana Porter, Steph Kiochi and Ashling Sheridan starting in the middle of the ground. And if you'd said that at the start of the season, you would have been like, oh, something has seriously gone wrong at the Pies. Um, I think that the Lions have a, have a bit of a deeper midfield in Ali Anderson, Emily Bates, Kathy Spark. Um, Belle Dawes has been excellent this year. And I, I think that spread of goal kickers um, that the Lions had especially on show against your girls, Ellie, sorry. <laughs> um, but I think that might be just, just a little bit too dangerous for the Pies. How, how do you see that sort of forward back? Because the Pies do have a strong defence. Yeah, they do, they do. But I, I completely agree with what you're saying in terms of Brisbane. They're, they've got a number of contributors a, across the board. They've got so many different avenues to goal and, and so many different players that hit the scoreboard. I mean, we saw yesterday um, Sophie Conway being really dangerous, all or Dwyer. I mean, her run across the wing is it, it's such a pivotal, it's such a pivotal player for yeah, it's good this Brisbane back. outfit. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, she <laughs> came back and played against <laughs> our side yesterday and was really good. But I mean, they're competitive. They run in numbers and and they stream hard towards goal. I mean, why wouldn't you when you've got the likes of Courtney Hodder down there as well? Yeah, and I just think they're also a really strong tackling team. Um, and the Pies are still trying to work out that new game plan, you know, to overcome those those high tackling, high pressure teams. Um, you know, I suppose the finals are the best place to test out whether that's working or not, but, but definitely one to watch there. Now, the Kangaroos and Frio game, it's a really intriguing matchup. I still am not quite <laughs> sure how to read those brews because they haven't done a great job beating teams above them on the ladder. They did beat Fremantle earlier this year, but the Dockers, if they're going to stop anyone and they want to win this game, they need to stop Ash Riddell because she was quite incredible on the weekend. A new AFLW record, 42 disposals she had against West Coast on Saturday. She played 62 minutes of game time, so that equates to a disposal every 1.48 minutes. And I want to put it in context because Tom Mitchell has the AFL record with 54 disposals and he went at a rate of one disposal every 2.15 minutes. So she's got Tom Mitchell covered, Sarah. Well and truly covered. And I think if you extrapolate, it ends up being somewhere in the 70s um, for this yeah. time, over women's time. I'm not quite sure how she does it. Her endurance is just, you know, is there a word beyond elite? Um, because I think that's where I think that's where Ash Riddell's endurance is at. Yeah. I mean, you, do you tag an Ash Riddell because she probably doesn't have that, I guess, impact or influence to, in terms of trying to win you a game. She's an accumulator, very much mm. like Tom Mitchell in that mold. Do you bother tagging her? No, I. Th I th I think if you're Fremantle, I think you turn your attention more to a Jazz Garner, who's more likely to to kick goals and impact on the scoreboard, but. Ash Riddell's that in-between player. She's that chain player that's really important for North Melbourne. So her getting plenty of the footy means that her teammates are getting plenty of the footy around her. Um, and she's just a, her work rate and her ability to set up really well around contests and, and be that handball release player is, um, you know, that's it, important for North Melbourne, but she does it incredibly well. And her fitness is, it's elite. That's why she's able to cover the ground and, and get 42 disposals. And what we saw was an incredible performance. Ah, amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. So well done to Ash Riddell. What do North need to do here to, to beat the Dockers? I mean, they have an impeccable record at Arden Street. They do. They do when they know how to play that ground extremely well, Sarah. And I mean, if you have a look here at, at you know, their fortress, essentially, they've, they've won some really strong games. But the one against Fremantle by one point, I think that's where they gain their most confidence from is, is that game there and I think the likes of North Melbourne, I think they're sticking to their structure and, and playing the way they want to play the game and, and not being too worried about the opposition and, and almost getting scared from what the opposition are producing. I think they need to back themselves in a little bit more and, and not be afraid to, to change angles with their, with their kicking game and, and really rely on their strong mids to play well. Sarah, what do Fremantle need to do to, to get the win? It's obviously going to be really tough going to Arden Street. Yeah, it is, but at least they have had that experience, albeit it was a loss, but it was a very close loss, came right down to the wire. Um, Ellie, you sort of alluded to it with the high pressure and North 
possibly being a little bit tentative and cautious when they're met with that high tackling game. And the Dockers are the best tackling team in the competition. The Roos are the highest disposal team in the competition. So that's what it's going to come down to, I think, with this game. Um, Emma King was such an important inclusion back on the weekend for the Roos. She's a, you know, she doesn't necessarily hit the scoreboard all the time, but she's that real link, at, like a traditional centre half forward. Yeah, she's just a good target up there, isn't she? But the mm. Dockers will have um, Trent Cooper confirmed it on the weekend. They will have Janelle Cuthbertson returning, which is mm, a huge, huge. inclusion. Um, and they do also have the luxury of being able to send Anya Tai back. In, in order to, you know, she probably has the height and the reach to combat an Emma King. So um, I don't think the Dockers will be daunted at all. Um, they'll be, you know, they've had that experience in Melbourne in the last few weeks as well, which will also help. Um, it's going to be a really, really tough battle. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. So the winner of the Ruse Frio game will, of course, play <coughs> Adelaide uh, in Adelaide as well, which is a tough ask. The Crows minor premiers, and uh, it was incredible to see Ash Woodland. What a season she has had. Uh, the leading goal kicker for 2022. And Sarah, she started so hot and then came home like a steam train. She really did. It was 10 goals from her first three games. Um, and then a bit of a quieter patch, I think, as the Crows had a bit of a quieter patch yeah. as well. Um, but it, it has really hit her stride just at the right time of the season. Um, it, it's really great to see these next generation of forwards come through. It's where you can see the competition is heading. And, and I think Ash's biggest strength is obviously, you know, the Crows bring so much yeah. of the footy her way, but she's able to get that separation on her opponent quite often. You could see it in the highlights there. There was no defender around her. It was just her leading towards the ball. So she's very dangerous. And I think with that star power too that Adelaide have, I mean, when Erin Phillips rolls forward, a lot of the, the defenders just naturally... Look at her. So she's yep. have, she does have other teammates that draw a lot of attention as well, but her work rate and her ability to create that separation, I think, is important to, to her winning that leading goal kicking award. So the Ds will face off against the winner of the Brisbane Collingwood game. And Melbourne, well, they had a mighty scare against a very plucky Carlton outfit on Saturday night. The Ds, though, managed to grind out a win. The Blues, though, nearly pinched it. I guess it's a credit to Melbourne, Sarah, the fact that they can win ugly. Yeah, and I think in years past, this would be one of the games that Melbourne could have dropped yeah. quite easily. It was sort of the knock on them that, that they, you know, were able to beat the top teams, but they'd drop games where, you know, where they were expected to win. So the fact that they were able to ha hang on, um, they obviously know Casey Fields so, so well, um, you know, and that'll bode well for finals just to have that you know what, we did this a couple of weeks ago, we can do this again. What do you make of the Ds, Ellie, and their Premiership credentials? I mean, we, we talk a lot about Adelaide as well. We just know what we're going to get from them during a final series. What are your thoughts on the Ds? I mean, they're in a prime position right now, aren't they? I think, you know, you look at Daisy and, and Taylor playing forward together. They've worked out a great combination um, between them. And Tyler Hanks, Karen Paxman, Lily Mithin are playing really well. Lauren Pierce is obviously really strong for them in the ruck space. But... They've got good players all around the ground and, and the players that are sort of, you know, you're not necessarily your, your high, high up players like yeah. your, your Paxies and Daisies and Taylors. They're all contributing. Everyone's it's a really sort even of spread, isn't it? Yeah, everyone's playing their role for their side. So I think they're in their best contention, contention that they've had all yep. of AFLW. All right, time now for our deep dive. And there has been so much talk about the timing of the next AFLW season. AFL boss Gillan McLaughlin has basically said the league's preference is an August start to season seven of the W. Yes, August. Uh, the commission has conditionally signed off on it with players, clubs and broadcasters to be canvassed. It's a massive talking point. The coaches, some of the coaches anyway, have had their say. Let's check it out. With four new teams coming in this year, I think of a season moving forward, it really puts a lot of teams under pressure. I certainly see the merit of it, but I'm just not quite sure if this year's the year to do it. I'm an advocate for keeping the AFLW, uh, giving it free air wherever, wherever possible, and uh, and I think this will do that. So if that if the, that it becomes the move, then yeah, I think the, I think it can work. I think it's a good idea. Um, we we get away from those really hot months. Yeah, I think it's worth having a look and maybe there's a couple of um, games where the, the women play before the men's and, and see what happens in that space. But, you know, we've got to keep evolving and, and trying new things. It's a tough one for this particular season to be sprung on um, at this stage. I've never been the one that's had all the solutions. I'm, I can see it working. So we'll, 
I'll, I'll back it in. <laughs> I think the actual timing of the season, you know, it, it had to change. Something had to give. Um, so I, I'm really, I'm, I'm glad that that's occurred. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, obviously a very quick turnaround to a, another season within a, within a year. It's probably not ideal to get there as quickly as we as we're going to be asked to do, but we've shown AFLW we're pretty versatile. We can go with the flow, and I think the earlier we do it, probably better off we're going to be. I think I understand it generally from an AFL perspective. Clearly, there's some challenges within it, and expansion clubs. Um, drafted plays still at school and all of those complications. I must say, you know, I've been through multiple changes over my time involved in football. It always seems to work out. At the end of the day, I don't get a say. So I just get, uh, I just do what I'm told and we'll make the best of the situation. That is going to do exactly what he's told. Ellie, have the players been canvassed so far and brought into the discussion around an August 2022 <laughs> season start? There hasn't been a lot of conversation with the players yet. Um, obviously, there's there's been minor sort of smaller conversations that um, you know people from the AFL that have had with certain players, yep. some senior players of the competition. Um, as a as a playing group, I think we meet with the PA pretty pretty soon to discuss our thoughts and views and and what we want, especially with the CBA coming up too. Yeah. So, I mean, it's yeah, it's kind of been thrown out there a little bit and. We'll see what happens. What are the issues that we're looking at and the AFL needs to address in order for us to, to be able to turn it around so quickly? Because I think from chats with the you know the three of us, we're all in agreement that August you know is a, is a good time slot, um, but August 2022 <laughs> that is some challenges there. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a really quick turnaround. If you think of the season that we've had, it's been hit pretty hard by COVID, so players are pretty tired from that. But I think the attention turns to staff. They won't have a break at all. Like, And it's not just like football staff. It's it's a wider community as well. It's, you know, broadcasters. It's it's you guys, you know, you're working every every weekend. It's You guys aren't getting a break. So I think there's so, so many different layers to it that I, I don't know if it's been thought out or, or not thought out or whatever it is. But, I mean, we still got to negotiate a CBA, which took a fair bit of time um, last time we did it. Um, you know, how long is the season going to go for? You know, we've got to work out sign and trade period, draft time, all of these things that have, have they don't have a date to it just yet. So there's a lot to, to come forward with it um, <laughs> before August starts, Sarah. Yeah, it's sort of been a bit of a, a not a bombshell, but like a, a bit of a, oh boy, like like a big breath in. As you said, there's so many things at club level that I, that I just can't even imagine having to get your head around, of, especially if you're an expansion club and you think that you have a bit more time up your sleeve in terms of building that first well, list. Well, two clubs don't have coaches. Yeah, and we've seen how crucial that first list build is, um, mm. you know, with some of the, the expansion clubs that have struggled and some that, are, that have gone really well. It's been on the back of that first list build. So to, to reduce that time is going to be really tough. Um, you know, and as you said, we've got draft. You know, what, what's going to happen with the with? I keep calling them kids. They're, they're now ten years younger than me. It's a little bit scary. <laughs> um, but you know, they'll be in year twelve, um, doing you know, exams. Doing exams. So you know, if round one's in August, then August is a pretty key, pretty key time in your year twelve schooling. My other question is: so for new clubs, you need to find one hundred and twenty players. So where are these players coming from? In, in particular, if you're not going to be able to use the under 18s because they're going to have year twelve exams and all the rest. We look at the state leagues and, and what's been happening in the state leagues already. So mm. if we're bringing in 120 players, are we then diluting the talent pool too? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a tough question, isn't it? Where, where are you going to find a, 120 players? Um, obviously, the, it's, the state leagues is, is going to be a really important part to this and, and that's where a lot of the players are going to have to come from. So, I mean, the draft, obviously, with the under-18s um, that are coming through, you know, we'll get plenty of numbers through there. But a lot of girls might look at it now and be like, well, I've got year 12 exams, so I want to sort of focus on my schooling while I can. And wait a year. Yeah, and, and then roll into the draft a year later as a, as a top age. And it's one of these ones where um, I think, you know, long-term, 
the national draft is going to be really important mm. in terms of, you know, there's been a lot of talk about equalisation and that the gap between the top teams mm. and the bottom teams um, and, you know, the, the fact that we have state-based drafts and I completely understand the rationale behind state-based drafts while the competition yeah. is part-time. You, yeah. you can't send players over to the other side of the country yeah. if they don't want to with jobs and the like. But it does mean that you're going to have 10 teams drawing from the Victorian pool and the Victorian pool is the one that's been hit, hit hardest by COVID. Yep. Um, state leagues have been patchy over the past two years. Community footy has been decimated, oh, yep. and that's the one that feeds the state leagues. Exactly. So it's it's a perfect storm of no one's causing. It's, it's a lot of external factors coming into play here, but it's there's a lot of things that need to be considered. Yeah. And clubs will have to devote a lot of time to scouting state leagues and all of a sudden they don't have time. Look, it's an interesting conversation. The AFL obviously has a lot on its plate to work through in the next uh, five months <laughs> or so, if my maths is yeah. correct. All right, it is time now to find out a little bit more about one of last week's NAB AFLW rising stars in Nell Morris-Dalton. <laughs> Oh, I like going on road trips up the coast, up the east coast of Australia. Um, be a fly on the wall so I could just like watch people go about their days. I have to say, I think Rocky's going to be a real good input into the party after the season. Josh Bruce definitely. Um, I can add you pottery. Frank Ocean. Uh, running my clothing business. Simple, fun and helpful. Now I'm sure you're going to have some <laughs> low-key celebrations now that, well, the season's over just to, you know, yeah. blow off some steam as you do after a, a long season. Um, is Rocky definitely going to be the life of the party? I think she'll definitely be up there. Who Rocky? else though? I think a, a good friend of mine in Izzy Huntington <laughs> is definitely a renowned partier. She has a good, good balance of, I think you said it earlier, um, you know, she's the one to organise at the party up, but also like school captain material as well. So she's got a good balance of it all, but yeah. definitely Rocky up we, there. We love Izzy as well. And thanks to Blake away, a valued NAB customer, Nell is going to get a gift voucher to buy some wonderful ready to eat meals made by chefs that care. And as a regular at Blake away, I can tell you the food is top notch and delicious. So she's going to absolutely love that. That is all we have time for on the W show. Thanks to NAB this week. Ellie, thank you so much for coming in. It's been great to have you in and enjoy a little bit of a rest. I will, thank you. It's been good to be back. And Sarah, as always, thank you. It's good to be back now. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you back. All right, everyone, we've got a final series ahead of us. Cannot wait. Make sure you keep clicking back to women's.afl and the AFLW live app. We'll see you same time, same place next week on The W Show.